And I think that's the hardest thing as women. And when you're young, like when you're a young woman and you have like these friendships and these girl relationships, um, you know, with your homegirls and stuff, and you got people to hang out with and stuff like that. And then you go from that to maybe having one friend or no friends in some instances. That's the hard thing to do because then you'll be like, well, who I'm going to talk to or who I'm going to do this with or who I'm going to do that with. But for me, it was just like, okay, I see now why every 10 steps I take forward, it still feels like I'm stuck in the same place because I'm surrounding myself with these people that really don't fuck with me like that. Like, I'm thinking that these is my homies, that we cool and that, you know, when I come around, it's a great thing. Like, you know, it's a party. It's all love. And in reality, it's like, oh, I can't stand her. Oh, she thinks she this or she thinks she that. If you got all this drama going on in your life and you trying to figure out why all of this drama is happening to you and you not doing nothing or you not sparking it, you are sparking it because you staying messing with the same people that's bringing the drama. But you cut them people off and see how quiet your life get. And it might seem boring, but you know what? I'd, I'd rather be boring. I'm boring. Good. I don't have no drama in my life. Nobody can't call me up starting nothing because I will shut it down early. It's no drama for me to be in. That is so peaceful for me. I have a peace of mind. You can't think with that type of drama going on. So for anybody that's listening, I just feel like if you want to move forward in your life, in your business, in your purpose, in whatever it is, like if everything in your life feel like it's stuck, then you got to take a look at what you stuck up under, who, who energy you stuck up under and clearing people out. For questions, comments, and to show your support, visit us on the web at afroempath.com. You're an empath. You know what? We all, generally speaking, we have some trauma in our lives, right? We have we have some some run-ins with narcissistic people. We, we're finding ourselves and realizing that we're sensitive and that we that we're emotional sponges, right? So how did you how did you realize that? And and what and what trials and tribulations brought you to that point? So I was always um, a highly sensitive child. Um, and I always knew from early on I had gifts. My mom was actually the person who picked it up first and realized that I had some gifts. And it wasn't like it was frowned upon or anything like that. You know, it was just one of those things. It was supported. Um, you know, <clears throat> it wasn't like a, a bad thing or anything like that. So um, I feel like when I was a child, my power was a lot stronger without me even, you know, really fully grasping what it was or how I was using it. And as I got older and went through so many things and kind of shut that part of me off, not intentionally, because that's not a part of me that I was trying to shut off, but ju that part shut down with the, you know, with things happening and interacting with different energies and, you know, getting kind of muddy you know, and, in, in the, you know, going through the mud with certain things. So, um, growing up, I was bullied a lot and just, you know, all the way from elementary school, right to high school. I went to six different high schools. I was always different, always kind of like outcast, always like the popular outcast, should I say, because everybody knew me, everybody knew my name, everybody in my hood knew who I was. They knew my family. And they'd be like, oh, that's that girl whose family owns a beauty shop. But that's that girl that always have the crazy colors in her hair and dresses different. I was always on my own vibe. And I wasn't trying to fit in with nobody. I was trying to find people that fit me. And I never could find people that fit me. I had some friends along the way. I'm never the, I was never the type of person that could hold on to friends like that. Like, I could have friends for 10 to 20 years or whatever. But I'm a loner. So, like, one minute we could be thick as thieves and then... And I won't speak to them for like five years. Not because we got beef, but just because that's how it is. And I've lost some friends along the way. Um, I realized that I was an empath or I learned what that word actually meant and embodied um, just when I started looking up stuff on my journey, coming into my own realization that I have these gifts and I have to do something with it and I have to get away from people 
in relationships that don't support that because I was in an eight-year relationship with a person who, you know, they, not that he was a bad person, he was a good guy and cared about me and loved me, but he wouldn't allow me to light candles in the house. Like, I couldn't light candles. I didn't feel comfortable meditating because it was like, oh, you doing your little meditation thing, and it was like something to make fun of, and the energy just didn't feel good for me to do certain things there. So I kind of suppressed that part of myself for mm -hmm. eight freaking years. Wow. And, you know, like, of course, I was probably reading and doing little things on my own time, but I wasn't fully able to explore it. And when I met my, my girlfriend or my ex-girlfriend, who's my best friend now, she is my, she's one of my soulmates. And so we had a very rocky, rocky relationship. Um, but we stayed friends because we realized that our spiritual connection was so deep. And so she's part of the reason why I kind of explored my spirituality more. We kind of like went into that together and it was, you know, it made it possible for me to be more introspective and kind of like really know myself, look at myself, stand in my truth, know myself, know my truth, like know who I am, my triggers, my flaws, like what my bullshit is and be able to present that to other people. Like, listen, this is me and if you fucking with me, then, you know, this is what you got to know. Because I don't, you know, I don't want to be trying to explain it to you or apologize for it later. Like, this is who I am. These are the things that I can't apologize for because, you know, it's me. And, you know, but if I hurt somebody, of course, I'm apologetic about it. But I'm not going to apologize for being who I am as a person. So I let people know right off the bat. Like, if you don't like it, just don't fuck with me. Because, you know, I had enough. Of yeah. <laughs> I can, I, <laughs> that was just funny because you know I can I can kind of see that you know I'm looking I'm looking at your 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 profile picture on Facebook you know as we speak and I kind I kind of see that in your face a little bit you know the face is kind of like yeah I'm you know <laughs> yeah what you know no but you know what I'm the friendliest person ever like I can I tell but you know they, they 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 say that the, the people with the the greatest the biggest hearts also have the also have to have the greatest defenses you know. Yeah, man, and you really do. It's yep. the truth. So yep. I just got to know what's good for me mm -hmm. and my energy. So, you know, because I have don't want to offend nobody. I hear you. But have I don't you, want nobody have you done a Myers-Briggs test to see to see what your personality type would be? Uh, The Myers-Briggs, is that the INFJ? Yeah, 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 is, yeah. Is, is, yeah, yeah. What did it come yeah, up as? Yeah, I did that test. I believe INFJ. If okay. I'm not mistaken, and I will, I will have to go back in my email or something to check, but I'm pretty sure it was INFJ. Okay, no, that sounds sounds about right. You know, I'm an INFP. There, we're we're very similar. It, is, it seems like um, INFJ and INFPs are are the most like empathic of all the personality types. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm a um, I'm an introverted extrovert. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so I want to, I want to touch on two, uh, two things like one, like, okay. So your first, you're not, not, I'm not sure your first, but this relationship with this, this, this gentleman here that for that lasted eight years, I, I have a theory and I'm mm -hmm. not, I don't know. You, you help me out with this and tell me, tell me if it has, if it's, has any found, if it's founded in anything, but like, I have a theory that some, some empathic women, um, they may, they may get with a, a guy and not have this have not have like the spiritual connection or like the certain tenderness that that they're lo longing for in a man you're gonna say like let me ask you did did, did you did you did, did you ever think about that like in terms of like women women like not finding tenderness in a, in a man and then it's i'm not sure i'm not saying you seek it in a woman i'm just saying that you find it more in a woman you're gonna say like what, what do you think about that maybe that that's maybe that's absolutely true um I think that women in general have or tend to seek out assholes. Um, I personally am attracted to asshole personalities, and um, it's not so much <laughs> it's not so much that I like a guy that's going to be an asshole to me. I just like the um, the protective nature of it. What's the word I'm yeah. 
yeah, the protective nature of it. Yeah. Um, but usually the the people that I've dated and the guys that I've gone out with, they were tender for me. Like even if they were thuggish or thugs, like they, I've never, no, I won't, I won't say never, but I've never long term dated or stayed with or been in love or in my feelings uh, with a man or a woman that was like rough or harsh or outwardly just mistreating of me like any any guy that I've dated for that matter when they got around me they were soft as Twinkie feeling they were real soft and they could be the thuggest dude in the street but honey when he was with me that man was a softy I don't play that shit mm -hmm. but still I'm not, that doesn't that doesn't attract me but um if, but I do see what you're saying. Um, we do tend to attract like the opposite of what we seem to need. I'm only yeah. I'm only saying that because I've I'm only saying because I met a sister. She was well, number one. She had an she had an abusive relationship with her, her father. It was abusive. So that that may have made her. I don't know. Yeah, see, that happens. Like women that are in abusive relationships or grow up with a certain kind of uh, male dominant figure around them, depending on what the interaction is, their choices in men kind of mirror that. And it speaks to that. And then when you realize it, or when you realize what you're doing, then you, you hopefully you change or you do something better. Um, for me personally, I've never really mirrored uh, what I grew up around because my father wasn't in the house. Uh, and I didn't have a feeling about that. Like, it wasn't something that I stayed up at night about crying. I had crying about I had a crap load of uncles. I had a great grandfather. And I, those were the men that I grew up around. And my grandfather and my grandmother were together um, consistently until they died together. So I don't have that image. You know, I had some uncles that were playboys, some uncles that were this, some uncles that were that. But all the men in my family were tender to me, and they all showed me mad love. Mm -hmm. So when I looked for relationships, that's not the thing that I was picking up for myself. Like if I saw, if I felt like somebody was, um, mean toward me or like their energy for me wasn't good then that made me want to not be around them men women regard doesn't matter which sex it was like when i saw it when i felt that that's the energy that she was giving me even as a teenager child whatever going through these relationships then that would kind of push me away so gotcha but do, but, do you, but do you think that not out yeah, I hear you saying, but 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 like, do do you think that like women have a certain tenderness that that men lack? You know what I'm trying to say in your in your experience in your experience, you know? Definitely, it's not even a tenderness. It's a it's a connection. Mm -hmm. Like I can't explain the connection, but I've I'd like to say that I have a lot of experience in relationships, in love, in exploring my own sexuality to be able to speak on this and I've I have observed my relationships and it's not even something that I could put into words. There is something about being in a relationship with a woman and is past the gender or in this past the sex or anything as far as like I'm attracted to women or I'm attracted to men. There's like an energy that is shared that is not comparable to the energy that you share with the man there's like an understanding there's an energy there's a like a a passion there's a lot of things that transpire that just doesn't i've never experienced in any relationship with a man all right let, let me ask you with with um <clears throat> would you say the last sister you're with uh that are that you're still friends with would you, would you say that she's also an empath yeah, definitely. Okay. But the the men the, have you been with a man that was an empath? Um If I I don't think so. And if I have been either I didn't realize it or they didn't realize it. Yeah. At the time. Yeah. So But my, looking back Go ahead. I'll let you finish. No, I said looking back, I'm not sure. I don't think Yeah. 
like basically my, my theory is, and you know, is that possibly because of the society we live in and the pressure that's on men, especially black men, should I say, um, a lot, a lot of us shut down, you know what I'm trying to say in terms of feeling, you know, because it can be hard to be, being a black man in this society is, is like, uh, uh, comparable to waking up in a nightmare every day. You know what I'm trying to say? But real, but, but seeing that it's mm-hmm. real. So a lot of us shut down our empathic abilities and I think that um, because of that, we we then uh, the a lot, a lot of women we don't we don't have that connection that you speak about to give to give them. Is that what I'm trying to say? Um, so mm-hmm. my I understand exactly. Yeah. So so my my theory is is that some some women I have a theory. And I, this is just a theory. I don't know if it's, I can't say if it's true or not. But I, but I, but I spoke to one sister and she said it might have some 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 weight. Is that some empath females? may may get with women because there there's a connection there that they're not getting with men because a lot of men have shut down their empathic abilities living in the society that we live in as 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 black men you know mm-hmm. yeah that could that could be true yeah that could be could be not true um I think that you always connect with people on a spiritual level I don't believe that. Uh, some empath women are getting with other empath women just for that connection alone. Because regardless, if you have a spiritual connection with somebody, there has to be an absolute attraction between you somewhere. You know, th- you know that that's what you like, or that's one of the things that you like. So, um, no, I'm not. But it's, yeah. I think it. Yeah, but I think it's definitely um, empath women are attracted to other women. And, um, and that could be part of the reason, a big part of the reason, because um, most of the women that I were involved with were very uh, spiritual, yeah, in nature. Yeah, it's and not. I'm, it's it's not. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, mm. This is not. It's not a knock on women or or women. You know, being with women. It's, it's just. It's just the. It's just something that I've realized that a lot of men may have empathic abilities but because of the society we live in they just they just had to numb themselves that's all that's all i'm trying to say that that's pretty much it yeah. that's all I mean, yeah i think that's definitely true oh no i'm not offended or anything yeah. i have to apologize i'm, no, I'm, I'm just i'm just saying yeah. for, for our listeners that um, may not understand where, where i'm trying to go with this you know <laughs> no doubt yeah yeah i think that's definitely true i do know some empathic men but those men are really in touch with themselves and in touch with their spirituality or woke, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So they kind of know, you know, they know they self. And it's hard for guys, for men, black men, especially in this society, it's really hard on you. So you have to, you do shut that part of yourself out. As a woman, some women shut that part of themselves out and have to be more... Um, more masculine yep. or stronger than you know so that goes for everybody yeah absolutely because i've i've met some some sisters that you know would classify themselves as gay but like when i look at them i can i can see in their eyes that that, that they're that they could be attracted to me but they're attracted to me because because of my energy you know what I'm trying to say like i have a i have a certain feminine mm-hmm. energy that a lot of men don't have mm-hmm. you know what i'm trying to say i'm in, i'm in touch with my feminine right. side but but I'm but I'm also right. masculine and in, in, in a sense that I'm um, I have a protective nature, you know. So I just think that you know it, that there there is there is there could be a longing uh, in our in our women to uh, to be with men that um, are in touch with their feminine side that that that's not there. You know what I'm going to say either either you're getting hyper masculine men or you know completely effeminized you know, men, you're going to say it's like, there's, it's hard, it's hard to get. There's no, there's no balance. Yeah, exactly. There's yeah. no balance. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. There's no balance. exactly. It's hard, it's hard to find a black man that's, that's, that has the balance nowadays, you know? So that's, that, 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 that's, yeah. that, that's all I can, that. I can definitely agree with that. And finding balance is a, a hard thing, especially when you have all of this other stuff going on that I don't even have to touch on. You're black, I'm black. So we already know, you know, what's up is a whole lot of things that wait on us as black people um that you don't you know finding balance is not always on the top of your list yeah yeah but exactly. really it's, 
if people will find the balance within within themselves, especially our people, then we will be able to get a lot more things done and hear each other a lot more clearly. But, you know, outwardly, I guess it just doesn't make sense for a lot of people and for a lot of men because men, um, for the most part, are one-track minded. Like, if they can't do those things, provide, protect, you know, those are the things that's on the top of a man's list. And, you know, that gets really difficult to do as a black man when society is keeping you down. And so that creates a whole bunch of other problems. And then you see how your spirituality and finding balance can get put to the back burner because you're trying to feed your family or you're just trying to survive as a black man. Exactly. Or you're just trying to eat or get your education or do whatever it is that you should be able to do without a problem or most people do without a problem but you got to go through all of these hurdles and shit to just do regular stuff so now your first priority is not going to be to meditate and get your chakras in order and you know discover yourself and figure out what your yin and your yang balance is because you got too much other stuff going on and if your homies see you doing that they're going to think you soft so, you know, it's it's a lot, whereas women are naturally always looking for that balance or trying to figure out, independent on what end of the spectrum you've fallen on as a woman, astrologically, spirit, astrologically spiritually, you know, et cetera, then you're going to be more inclined to do that introspection than others. Mm. But we're usually the people that's ushering in that type of, thing and and kind of pushing that thing forward to like figure out who you are and get in balance with yourself yeah and that type of stuff you know if we if people would just take the time out to figure out who they were and that it's okay to have a masculine and feminine balance like that's how we're made we're supposed to have masculine and feminine balances we're like puzzle pieces that's how we fit together and we're not fitting together and it's like you know, it's it's rough. It's rough yeah. for us right now. It's yeah. like trying to fit a a peg a, a peg into a into a circle or a circle into a square hole. You know, because we're not balanced and we're yeah. bringing that imbalance to each other, Bingo, and yeah. we're not fitting together like we're supposed to. Yeah, I think I think the black the black male <clears throat> has to because because he is so um, you know uh, socially and eco- economically castrated by design. I think he sometimes overcompensates for that and tries to be hyper masculine. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, well, the the society promotes that. Yeah, but I'm saying even, even yeah, the society the society promotes that, but but you know, but you don't have to feed into it. But a lot of them do because it's the it's the only way that they can feel like a man. And so I think that sometimes that turns into uh, when in a relationship, it can it can turn to either physical abuse or some kind of other type of abuse. You know what I'm trying to say? Where Mm-hmm. They feel like they gotta put. They feel like they gotta put a woman down to feel like they're a man of the house. You know what I'm trying to say, or to feel like they're a man. Period. Because they've lost the typical um, avenues to express yourself as a man, as being a provider. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, because it's hard, right. it's hard to be. It's hard to be a provider. Um, you know, um, in in a, in, a, in a world that is designed to shut you out. So. You know, when, when it's hard being a provider in a world that's not set up for you to be able to provide. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So the the whole the whole Maslow's hierarchy of needs thing. You know, they have they have they have us um, at the bottom rung of that still. So um, you know, I I I think you know he, hearing you speak about um, men and women, it, it kind of makes me think. Boy, it mu- it much it must be easier just to be with a woman because you don't have to deal with all that. All you know, it's not that you hate black. It's not not that you hate black men, but you realize that we do have a lot of struggles outside of knowing ourselves. You know what I'm trying to say? So if you're on a path towards, I don't think I don't think think it's easier. Um, it's difficult. No matter no matter who you dating, it's gonna be difficult. If you dating a person of color, um that doesn't know thine self mm. then you are going to have a difficult time um you know so and i i date black women and black men um and however you want to categorize what falls un, under that umbrella of people of color mm-hmm. 
<laughs> you understand? And so um, it's, I'm not going to say either one is easier than the other because it's not. I think that for me now, knowing myself going forward into any relationship, I already know um, when I'm in the person's presence, when I get, when I'm getting to know a person, if certain things are going to work out or how far certain things could possibly go. Um, so, you know, or how difficult things could actually be. You can't, you can't really um, know everything, but I know who's going to fit me, so to speak. So you know, and if something is not meshing with meshing with me, then I'm out. Gotcha. So, what what um, are a common thing uh, common themes among women that you've dated in terms of the issue that they struggle with? Um, I don't know if there was a common thread. I think that the women that I dated at the time were just in my life uh, for those seasons, like to bring me to some kind of awareness about myself and vice versa. I brought them to some kind of awareness about their selves. Um, they all had like different stuff going on with them. So, you know, and different stuff going on as it pertains to our relationship. And that's why, you know, we didn't work. But I will say that the last person that I dated, which is my very close friend, my best friend, um, she was like the combination of everything <laughs> up to that point. So our relationship was very explosive. And um, there was a lot of things going on between us. I think we came together at a time where we were just going through a lot and both really trying to, like, get hit in the head with um, – the universe was banging us in the head. Like, listen, you know, that's a hard thing when you're having all of these things go on because that affects your world outwardly. It affects everything. It affects your work. It affects your home. So we had all of these things going on. And I just have to say that for us to have gone through so much and to be able to come out on the other side as friends and like be able to have deep conversations about spirituality and kind of like be in tune like we'll be going through the same stuff at the same time and I'll be like yo I didn't call you for a week because I was going through it she'll be like I know I felt it I knew you was going through it or you know like we have that kind of ebb and flow between each other that's kind of you know it's hard to find and when you do find it it's not going to be pretty it's not going to be flowers and roses and stuff like that usually your soulmate is a mirror it's like putting up a mirror to you and you're going to kind of, you're going to fight it mm -hmm. that's beautiful i'm i'm just i'm just blessed to to hear that you had that you have that kind of relationship that's good um mm -hmm. but you know, we talked. We talked a lot about black men and, and what they go through. So, what? What I'm saying. What? What common themes do you see in terms of black women in general, though? Like right now, what? What do you? What do you feel that we're that you guys are dealing with in terms of knowing thyself? You know, as a black woman, yeah. well, you know, we are at the bottom of the totem pole, and so people go back and forth with whether black men are at the bottom or black women are at the bottom, but they say it's a man's world. <laughs> So I'm going to say, for the sake of this conversation coming out of my mouth, that we are, in society, we are at the bottom of the totem pole. We are under black men. And we have been bombarded with these images, with these messages, that we ain't shit, that we're not good enough, we're not pretty enough, we like the ugliest women on the planet. Everything is wrong with everything about us, from our nappy hair to our big lips to all of these things. I wrote a poem about this like 15 years ago, and I swear this before the explosion of the Kardashians and, you know, everybody injecting their lips and stuff like that, I wrote this poem. And it's, it's so funny because when I think about what's going on today, we're like, black women still 
feeling like we're at the bottom of the totem pole, but slowly coming into this awakening of being natural and embracing our own beauty. And that's a beautiful thing to see in of itself. But um, we we got a long way to go. We still had to struggle because now you got people pumping their butts up and getting their lips injected, getting tans, getting all of this. Like you could literally be a black woman without going through all of the pain <laughs> of being a black woman. And it's like, wow, but, but we still not enough. And it's like everybody wants to take everything from us. And don't give us no credit. Like, y'all ain't shit, but by the way, we'll take them lips, we'll take that nappy hair, we'll take all of that, because it's better on everybody else but you. And then if you go to school and you work, you're too strong, you're too independent. If you say, I want to be a stay-at-home mom, or I just want to, you know, I want to be in a happy relationship and raise kids and have a husband or whatever, then you're lazy or you, you like, you don't have goals. Like, I don't know. I feel like you, as, you know, for black women, like, you kind of can't win. So for me and I'm for myself and for other black women, some some other black women that I know, I just figure, fuck it. I'm not trying to please nobody but me. Mm-hmm. Does that mean I don't care about anything? Nope, it doesn't. That just means that I need to figure out how to love my own beautiful black self and come out of the mindset that I'm at the bottom of the totem pole because even though that's what society places me, that's not who I truly am. And so I have to keep myself in that realization and out this matrix way of thinking and that, you know, it's hard it's not like it's an easy thing to do even when you know even when you know better it's still a struggle every day it's still you still struggle with your interactions with people and how certain people treat you how certain people react to you especially when you walk in your truth and you know who you are and you decide that you're not going to let somebody talk to you any kind of way or treat you any kind of way or you're not going to accept any kind of service or you know that just brings up a whole nother thing so it's just like a daily it's a daily fight it's you on the battlefield every day how are you, how are you with your meditation? Are you do, you do you how how often do you meditate out of curiosity? Every day. Every day, good. I I think every I'll, single day. Every yeah, day. I was I was just meditating and and thinking about like kind of not not what you're talking about in terms of with black women, but just in terms of myself because you know we we all have our own struggles between as black people as a, a period male or female, and I realized that mm-hmm. ultimately, no matter um what you um see on the media in terms of a better image of yourself or what you tell yourself, I feel un- until you do the inner work or the inner chakra work, you're going to say to really let go of this world and to stop caring about, um, oh, you yeah. know, poles or the yeah. bottom top, you know, who decides that? <laughs> you know what I'm going to say? Ultimately, yeah. We, yeah, yeah, exactly. Ultimately, you know, um, you, we are each universe is within ourself. You know what I'm trying to say? So, Yes. It's like you know, once 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 you realize that, then you know, you you, you know, all is mine. So you, you can define you can define your reality based upon how 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 you how you'd like to perceive yourself. And I'm gonna say, um regard regard and then how and based upon how you perceive yourself, the world will change around you. You know what I'm trying to say? Um Yeah, and, that's yeah. absolutely true. Yeah. We're we're we've been, you know, in this country, um, under white supremacy, we've been going through a process of I know I like I like to think of uh, how in in uh, in boot camp they break you down they break your self esteem down you know um, they break it down so they can so they can rebuild you up something new and better you know what I'm gonna say and I think that metaphysically speaking we're we we we're, we're we've been broken down to be to be to learn how to be in our truth you know what I'm to, to 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 refine our truth our inner truth you know and um, that's I think that that really what that really is is that. Really, your 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 worth. I feel your worth really in this world is going to be based upon your knowledge of self and your and through that knowledge of self, your knowledge of God within yourself. You know what I'm trying to say? And mm-hmm. um, once once you're no longer subject to you know uh, being dictated by finite things, which your your vessel is. You know what I'm trying to say? 
um, you know, uh, then, then, then your, then your, um, your strength and your, and your self-worth is something that will never waver because it doesn't come from anything external or anything finite, you know? You have to do the inner work. Yeah. You have to, it's a lot of things that you have to work on. Um, as a person of color, you have to heal your ancestral DNA. Right? Mm -hmm. You have to heal those things. You know? you got to reach back generations and heal that stuff and then come up and heal yourself. And then you got to know that. Somebody had to tell you that. Somebody has to pull you in or you have to gravitate towards that to know about it, to heal it, to find Find out about it. So you know it, there there is that. You know you have to heal all of these things with yourself first. When, when did that happen for you? What age did that happen for you? When you became when you say you became into consciousness and what and what sparked that? Um, let's see. I I, I want to say I always had a consciousness. Like I've always been searching, but. When I really, when it really hit me, I think it was at 33. That's when everything really started to fall apart and fall into place. At um, when I turned 33, my my 33 year. That was a heavy year for me. I lost a lot of friends. Um, <laughs> probably all my friends. I lost so many friends and I just came into so many realizations about everything about life and you know like this path that I had to forge in the world at 33 what what sparked it was you know like what what was it was there was there was there I mean obviously it's an internal thing obviously first but what physically I just sparked it? what physically sparked it was that Maybe it was just the universe waking me up and I was just seeing things amplified. It was like I had just put on glasses for the first time and I was seeing things that, you know, like when you're in toxic relationships or relationships with people that is not really down for you, not romantic relationships. I'm talking about like people that you think is your friend mm -hmm. and then you realize like hindsight always gives you twenty twenty, and you realize like the little bullshit that they would do that you should have picked up on at the time when you thought they was your friend. Mm -hmm. But now that y'all not cool no more, now you now you see it. Well, that stuff was starting to happen right before my eyes, and like I was seeing the little faces that certain friends would make. Um, I would hear the little intonations in their voices and I would just feel this energy shift that didn't match with what was coming out of their mouth. You know, so it was like you was you looking at me and saying, I look beautiful, but your face is scrunched up like I smell like shit. Mm -hmm. That type of thing. And I was like all of this stuff had just started like falling into place for me like when I was see how people respond like if I say no to something or I can't do something like how everybody just started to f switch and I don't know if my reaction to seeing that stuff is what sparked it but all of a sudden I just known that my like my people that I was close to was starting to fall by the wayside like we was falling out and it was just like all right well then peace out like that I see who you are and you you a hater like you really hating on me and I'm trying to love you you know so I was just like wow and so I just once I saw who people were in my life um and I cut them off I never looked back I said okay well, we ain't friends no more I was hurt but that was it. I washed my hands and I was like, all right, fuck it. How'd that process go? Take me through, it, it, a, pro take me through a process because guess what? One day, one day a girl's <laughs> going to listen to this and it's going to go through the same thing. And I want to know how did you do that? Because letting people go, you know, again, I just had the, my late, the, the, one of my latest podcast episodes was about that. How did you do that? Okay, so I don't, I don't, I don't want to be hurt. Nobody wants to be hurt. Mm. So you're your first reaction to something that's gonna that's hurting you is gonna be to stop whatever it is that's hurting you. And that's just how I looked at um these friendships. 
is it was something that I couldn't ignore. I don't even know if it was a whole process because once I pinpointed what I was feeling and what I was seeing, then it was like, oh, okay. And I just stopped. I just fell back. Like I stopped answering my phone. And I think that's the hardest thing as women. And when you're young, like when you're a young woman and you have like these friendships and these girl relationships, um, you know, with your homegirls and stuff, and you got people to hang out with and stuff like that. And then you go from that to maybe having one friend or no friends in some instances. That's the hard thing to do because then you'll be like, well, who I'm going to talk to or who I'm going to do this with or who I'm going to do that with. But for me, it was just like, okay, I see now why every 10 steps I take forward, it still feels like I'm stuck in the same place because I'm surrounding myself with these people that really don't fuck with me like that. Like, I'm thinking that these is my homies, that we cool and that, you know, when I come around, it's a great thing. Like, you know, it's a party. It's all love. And in reality, it's like, oh, I can't stand her. Oh, she thinks she this or she thinks she that or here come this miss, you know, whoever. And and that was the part that was like, wow, you know, that was the reality check for me. I don't want to be where I'm not wanted or where I'm not appreciated. And when I felt that energy, I wanted to remove myself from it. So that's the the process, just not wanting to be in that space. I mean, if you got all this drama going on in your life and you trying to figure out why all of this drama is happening to you and you not doing that and you not sparking it, you are sparking it because you stay in messing with the same people that's bringing the drama. Yeah. But you cut them people off and see how quiet your life get. Mm-hmm. And it might seem boring, but you know what? I'd, I'd rather be boring. I'm boring. Good. I don't have no drama in my life. Yeah. Nobody can't call me up starting nothing because I will shut it down mm-hmm. early. It's no drama for me to be in. That is so peaceful for me. I have a peace of mind. You can't think with that type of drama going on. So for anybody that's listening, I just feel like if you want to move forward in your life, in your business, in your purpose, in whatever it is, like if everything in your life feel like it's stuck, then you got to take a look at what you stuck up under, who who energy you stuck up under and clearing people out. Yep. Like what I feel like when you walk in the room, and this is not me being egotistical or anything like that, but when you walk in the room, in your mind, the people that you are coming into your life, like when you come to see your friends or your friends come to see you, you should hear like uh, applause. <laughs> you should hear like gratitude. That's the feeling that you should get when you are around people that give and receive your love and your energy. It should always feel like a standing ovation. Like it's love when you walk it. That's what you should feel like. It should never feel like um, you're not sure what this energy or what this feeling is. Because that ain't for you if it is. It should always be love and support. When I walk it, like the feeling that you get when you walk into the into the room where your mom is. If you have a good relationship with your mom, mm-hmm. you feel that love. You feel that support. That's the kind of people that you're supposed to surround yourself with. And if that's not the energy that you... Um, receiving from your crowd then you need a new crowd yeah i i uh i recently or no crowd yeah exactly i <laughs> i that's yeah, one of the things i've recently come to realize is that you know you have to take a like an inventory of your life in terms of the people that you surround yourself with you know um it's yeah. it's, it's a major thing yeah. you know uh you know uh, basically you know as empaths we want to vibrate high we want to vibrate higher and higher and higher right but not everybody has that that goal you know what I'm trying to say? And so um, it's like when you begin to vibrate higher, you're going to you're going to have some people that are jealous of, of, of they're jealous of the, of the of the spark of God within you. Truthfully, now, they're not going to they're not even going to know how to say that to know to know that you're know going to say they don't even realize why they mad at you. They, exactly. They don't they don't realize it exactly because we as black people are, are harbor so many inner demons that go unnoticed, you know. Um, and we're, we've grown comfortable living with them, Yeah, you know, and, um, you know, as empaths, you know, we're, we are, we're light beings, you know? So when, when it's time for us to shine that light, you know, those, you know, those lower vibrational entities, 
they they don't like being around that light. You ever say they like you know they you know it's like they it it, it blinds them and annoys them. It, it forces them to. It's like we're like a mirror for them, and we show them. Mm-hmm. Um, something within themselves that they're that they're um, not doing. Exactly. You know what I'm gonna say? There's inner work that, that they're not doing, and and because we're doing it, we should. I always used to feel like that. Like people were mad because I was just being who I was naturally, and I was never afraid to be that person. Like you know, everybody that knows me would be like, "Oh, like you're really different. Like you don't dress like nobody. Like you don't care what nobody thinks." And it's not even that I was thinking I should care or not. This is just like I. This is my skin. Like this is how I feel comfortable, and I don't know any other way to be. And people get um intimidated by that or it it puts them off because you know most of us are walking around with a different face on like we all wearing masks everybody have to put on some kind of mask during you know in their everyday life and when you just say hey like this is me um this is who i am it kind of it messes with people and it's like oh why why she shines so bright like why you shining i threw mud at this chick and she's still shining like what is the problem yeah yeah i i think what it is is they're they they don't know really what love is or what god is really you know and so when they see it within you that's that that light within you it's like I don't know. It's like it's like a monkey. They don't really know some. They, you know, it's like you you try you try to put a TV or something or something. Put put an invention, a human invention, in front of a monkey. They're not gonna know what it is. So they're gonna like, you know, do what monkeys do. They're trying to intimidate it. Maybe, maybe they'll throw some shit on it. People fear exactly people fear what they, what don't, they don't know, and they fear what they don't understand. Exactly. Well, what what they don't understand is God, as God, as God, God's love. You know what I'm saying? And so, God, obviously, God, God it, it exists within us, you know, within our hearts. And so, it's like when they when they have become so alienated from that within themselves, they, I, what it is, I think what they re- what they're really trying to do is they want to black people want to avoid pain for as long as they can. If that makes any sense, right? Right. Um. In order, in order to, in order to know love, in order to know God, you have to know and face pain. That's yeah. why we meditate, right? Um, so black people want to avoid pain for as long as they can, possibly. Um, so when they, when they come around you, and they see God, and they see that spark within you, it, it, it puts a mirror up to them and shows them that they're avoiding their own pain. And that, and that's why they don't like you. That's it. That's really all. That's really what it is yeah. when it comes down to it. They don't like you because you're exposing what they're not doing, and they hate that. They hate that. And sometimes it's not that. It's not even that people don't like me or don't like you or empathic people. I think that we have this as empaths. We have this um, experience where people will be around us because they like the energy or they like whatever attention they feel is drawing towards us but it's not that we are even seeking the attention or the energy is you bring that with you and so they want to be around you and they will drain you and it's not i feel like people who feel like they don't like me is because they don't like something about themselves and that's not saying that everybody has to like me because everybody not gonna like you and you know, so what if they don't? Because you're not put on on this earth for everybody to like you. But usually, when people have that kind of strong reaction, it's not necessarily you or something that you did. It's something that they. It's a feeling that you bring up for them. That's it. yeah. That's it. You know, whatever that exactly. Is, that feeling is. Yeah, it is. Truthfully, I've noticed within my within my own life, my own family, and just people in general, like. In order to face pain, in per se, and face what you're not doing, you, there's there's a there's a certain bit of humility that you have to have to realize that you're not as strong and as tough as you think you are, or as powerful as you think you are, you know. And um, a lot of these people don't want to humble themselves. In per se, um, they don't want to hum- humble themselves to the light. Not even with inside you, but just the light with inside themselves, and just God. Period. You're gonna say because God's within all of us, you know. So, but they, you know, they don't want to. They don't want to have to humble themselves to to like uh, seek 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 a different way, a d- different way, a different path. You know, it's like 
if your entire life you're running on a straight track, right, and you're thinking that I'm going the right way, I'm going the right way, and then you're confronted with somebody or an energy that tells you, oh, no, you're not really. Most a lot of people don't have the um, how can I put it? They're not. They don't have the humility, I guess. Really, you know, um, to really reevaluate where they're going. You know what I'm trying to say? In, in 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 their internal worlds, does that mean make mm-hmm. sense? You make this some sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People don't. Sorry, you got some 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 background. It's always it's always uh, noisy in my background. That's why I had the music on because um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all it's all it's all good. <laughs> listen, this is the loud this is the right. loud house. <laughs> if you can if you can meditate here, you can meditate anywhere. Gotcha. <laughs> I hear you, sister. I hear you. <laughs> Sorry about that, but yeah. Oh, you don't gotta apologize. It's not, it's not good. I, I'm just. I. It's. It's a blessing for me to hear your experiences, right? Because they. They not just mirror my own, but they mirror so many. So many other empath. Uh, you know, sisters and brothers that. That I've. That I've spoken to and yeah. interviewed. You know. So it's like it's. Just, it's just. It's just. It's just good to hear. It's good to have a forum to be able to. Know that you're not going crazy. You know what I'm saying? Because as an empath, as an empath, you can easily mm-hmm. feel like you're going crazy. And I will say that um, it's in the benefit of those people who harbor so many demons to gaslight you to make you think you are. Yeah, it's, you know what I'm saying? Going that's crazy. True, because you will think yeah. you're going crazy, and you think something is wrong with you. And you know, I, I mean, I'm so happy that I know, you know who I am and where I am in this journey because it helps with a lot of areas in your life. Like I've struggled with being depressed. Like as an empath, you know, you have all of this stuff. It's easy to, it's easy to get depressed. And sometimes you get depressed with other people's stuff and think that it's yours and you don't even realize what it is that you're feeling and you mistake that for being depressed. So like, you know, it just it just helps to mm. know so that you know the tools that you need to kind of combat this stuff and not, um, you know, not go through life feeling horrible or wanting to take your own life. And I have attempted that in my younger days and thank God that I wasn't successful, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. but because I'm supposed to be here, there's a reason, but... You know, had I known these things earlier on and been able to use the tools that I use to keep myself, you know, in a good, positive mind state, I would have been better off. And one of the main tools that I use is meditation. Like, I need to meditate every day because it keeps my mind right. That that means I got people coming in my house. It's about to get noisy. <laughs> it's all good, sister. We're 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 almost we're probably almost about to to end here. Um, you just gave some some beautiful advice right there. Any anything you want to close on or something? Because I know, I know you you probably got to head out here pretty soon. Um, I don't know if there's a sh- if there's anything I want to close on. Um, where are you at right now? Let me ask you that. Where are you right? Where are you at right now? And where do you see? Where Where do you see yourself? You know, like how, what do you, what What do you feel like in in the universe right now? That like in terms of your your lessons that that you're that you're needing to learn right now. Like, what do I know? need to What do I need to learn right now? Like what 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 do you feel the universe is calling you to like realize within yourself oh, right now? Okay. You know what I'm saying? Well, Does that make any sense? What I'm trying to say. Right now, I feel like I'm really just starting on my journey um as to finding out like what my true purpose is and what i'm being called to do i know that i'm being called to to find my tribe and to assist other women of color in their journey whatever that may be in their spiritual journey in their journey to find their best and true itself because that's what my journey is all about that's what i'm trying to do and so like right now i feel like it's a really good time for me because i'm really learning more and more who i am every day i'm accepting of almost every you know part of me it's a work in progress i'm a work in progress but i know that and i know what i will accept and what i want and what i want to attract 
and I know what I don't want, and that is a beautiful thing, and that's a powerful thing. And I just think that anybody that's no matter where they are in their journey, like we all as people, in order to be our best selves, I'm trying to be the best version of myself, whatever that is. I want to know it. I want to know what it is to be at my best physical, fit self. Um, how it feels to feel great in my body. I want to know how it feels to feel in tune spiritually and in order and aligned. I want to know what that feels like. And so that's my that's my journey to get there or as close to that as I can be because I can't be good for anybody unless I'm good to me first. I think that's the, the message for women, mm -hmm. for empaths, for black women, black women empaths is to self-care. Take care of yourself. Get to know yourself. Don't be scared of yourself. Stand in your own truth. You know, recognize your bullshit because you got some. We all got some. Recognize what it is. Recognize the things you need to work on and just be honest with people. If either people going to love you or they're going to leave you alone. That's the best thing for you. Mm -hmm. Just tell me your truth and, and get to know yourself. If you or anyone you know would be interested in spiritual life coaching from a fellow empath, email afroempath at gmail.com or visit afroempath.com for more information.